Welcome. I'm Colleen Tauke and I'm the Sewing Specialist for Franz & Porter. In this video tutorial, we are going to talk about the table runner called Charmed I'm Sure. For the pattern for this project, visit our website. Now, for 15 squares, we can make the great table runner we have behind us. So if you've got a partial pack of 5 inch squares left from a previous project, you've got a table runner in the making. So we're going to pick out uh, the beginnings of just a few of our squares here. And um, these, since these are the pre-cut, we've now found this wonderful stripe that you can coordinate. A lot of times we stray away from, we, or we tend to shy away from the stripes when we see them in the stores and say, how would I use that? Well, this is a perfect place to pick up one of those stripes and coordinate it with your five inch squares. You'll see all the purples and the blues and a little bit of that green pop out in this stripe and play really well with the squares. So what we've done is cut strips from those, um, from the stripe fabric, and we're gonna make it into short, almost like piano keys between each of our squares. So what we're gonna do is we've, um, if you follow your instructions, they'll tell you how many of the short bars to cut. And our layout for our um, table runner is a square, a bar, square and keep going in that manner to join five of them together for one row and as you go remember to stop go to the iron press your um, seams flat and then press the seam allowance um, towards the bar in this case i'll show you two rows that i've already partially joined now i've just done a, um, a short part of the row otherwise it'd be off the table here but this is the beginning of row one. See if you use sticky dots, it's a great way to stay organized. Because a lot of times, even though we're only using 15 squares, you may have laid them out and found the perfect alignment of where you want the colors to pop through your table runner. And so once you've created your rows, you want to be able to put them back in that same exact order. So we've got row one and row two here, partially constructed. And you'll see that I've joined them block, bar, block, all the way down. Now, I've started to add the um, long strips that you'll see on the table runner behind me that join the three rows then together to actually make the entire top. Now, if I open this back up, you'll see there's this, my seam allowance. I've gone in and pressed it flat. And now I'm gonna join row one to row two. But the big thing is I wanna make sure that this continues on and jumps across and doesn't shift out of alignment like this when I get done then not giving me that nice window painting type effect. So what we're going to do is there's two, two ways you can do this. The easy way that I like to do is just to lay row one, um, the row without the sashing attached yet on top and you'll see that the row underneath gives us clues to where it needs to be lined up. So when these, and you can feel through, the seams allowances will kind of line up one over the top of the other. The other thing to do is to go in and do just a little bit of math. I'm going to flip this over and we would mark along the actual long sashing bar. Now, we know that these are five inch squares. And if we re, um, are to um, figure out the math, we're going to uh, um, take away the seam allowance. So five minus one quarter would make it four and three quarters. And we would measure down with a ruler and mark the four and three quarter line. We know our sashing here finishes to an inch and we mark the other side of that. So we would mark all the way along by measuring the increments that we want to match up. When we lay this one on top, then those markings or registration marks that we've created would line up with our seam allowances and we would know exactly where to pin things. There are so easies on our website that you can go to to watch another tutorial walking through row alignment or sashing alignment. Okay, so when we've joined these seams together, these two sections together, again, we're gonna press seam allowances toward the sashing bar, and that would then let um, all the seams rest very gently. And you'll create the table runner, Charmed, I'm sure. Now, the last little fun part of this is that you'll notice the binding on this project is cut on the bias. And that creates that candy striping type of effect on the outer edge. It's a great way to show off a striped fabric. For more of our video tutorials, visit our website. 
Thanks for joining me in the studio today.